Hi, I'm Daniel from Ford Audio and in this video I'm going to show you an exciting recording and mixing technique for double bass. Let's go! Alright, let's see what we've got here. So in this setup we have three microphones. Let's quickly compare how each of them sounds. The first microphone, this condenser microphone right here, is pointing directly at the fretboard to cover the finger picking and also a little bit of the breathing of a player, which is pretty cool in my opinion. It gives it more of a human touch. The second microphone, this ribbon microphone right here, is pointing directly at the body. It basically covers all of the low frequency and the resonance of the body. The third microphone, this microphone right here, is a little further away. Now you could argue that this microphone is a room microphone, but actually it doesn't cover that much of the room ambience. So it's more like a microphone to cover the whole bass. This miking technique gives us absolute freedom to take different parts and different aspects of the double bass and put them together in the mix at our will. So the first thing we would now like to do before we even start with a mixing process is to face align all of these microphones. All three of them have different distances to the instrument. So there might be some serious face alignment issues here. So let's check for that. Alright, so in the pre-production of this video I've already checked these tracks on how they align together and I found that the combination of this mic and this mic is one of the best examples I've ever heard for a face alignment slash time alignment issue. So let's hear this once again. So you can clearly hear, if we mix both tracks together, normally the volume should go up. But in this case it goes down and you can also hear a very steep cut in the low frequencies. So let's compare this to the body microphone too. So let's see what we can do about it. Firstly, I will assign all three of these tracks to a stereo subbus, call it bass aligned. And then I will pan this track completely right and these both tracks completely left. And you will see why I do that in a minute. So let's add our plugin FA Guitar Line to this track. So what we've done here is we sent these two microphones to the left side of our plugin and they are already mixed together. And now we will face align and mix them with the third microphone. Let's see what our plugin has to say about the right distance. Alright, let's make a quick comparison between the original and the face aligned version. Alright, so this is already a huge improvement. You may have noticed that the face density scope in the right hand side of a plugin changed from red and very widespread in the original, which means anti-phase, to a green and very narrow field in the timeline version. So, as this is already settled, let's look for a good mixing value between these microphones. Yes, I think that's alright. Let's proceed with mixing these near mics. Yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds good to me. The cool thing about this mic technique is that I can now take a single aspect of the instrument and change it even in a pre-final mix at will. If I want to have a more picky sound from the fretboard, I can turn this mic up. If I want more of a low-end bass, I can turn this microphone up. And if I want to add more of the overall sound of the instrument and a little bit of ambience, I can go into the plugin and change the X and Y pad to hit the perfect setting. Okay, so I made a little cut here and made some off-screen mixing. And now I want to show you which effects I applied to get this bass sound. Okay, so the first one would be the equalizer right here. I've made a low cut to tidy up the low frequencies a little bit and I've also made a boost in the 4K range and the high shelf to get a little bit more of that picking sound and also to have a little bit more air. So let's compare this. I've used this multiband compressor to tame the lower mid frequencies a little bit because otherwise it could get really boomy in the mix. So let's compare this. Then a little bit of saturation. Let's see. This adds a little bit of warm tame saturation to the overall mix. It's very subtle, but you miss it if it's not there. Finally, the last plugin in this signal chain is this equalizer, which I actually use for sidechain compressor. So let's have a look. This is a very subtle and cool trick to make room in the lower frequencies every time the kick drum is hit. If you want to have a special tutorial on how to do this, make a comment in the comment section below. And there you have it, a solid double bass sound which is present in your mix in only a few minutes. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. So smash the subscribe button, click the notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.